morning, everyone. My name is Scott Morris. I am the Director of Business Development for GTS Distribution. We are here with another one of our publisher retailer webinars. Really want to thank everybody for joining us. This morning, we're doing something a little unique. Uh, we're going to be talking with Academy Games. We have Uva and Gunta Eichart here from Academy Games. We're going to be talking about two games that are actually both available for pre-order right now. Um, but they are both coming out very soon, so we're not too far off in the distant future. As those of you who may have joined us in the past know, normally we talk about a game available right now and a game available coming out in the future. In this case, both games are going to be available for pre-order. So our weekly special is a little different this week, just so everybody knows. Um, we're going to talk about two really cool games. The first one is Tudor, and the second one is Agents of Mayhem. Both of them are available for pre-order from GTS right now. Um, when you pre-order between this Monday and next Monday, the 11th, you'll be able to get 52% off MSRP as well, which is a great little bonus. These are two very different and very cool games. One of them is very Euro-like, and one of them is based on a video game. I'll let you decide which one is which as we go forward. But with us today is Uva and Gunther Eichhardt. They are uh, the masterminds behind these two games and many more games as well. Academy has a great catalog of several different types of games available from GTS and local distributors. I will let them go ahead and take over, but if anyone has questions while we go through, uh, just know that you can hover over your window and at the very bottom, there's a little chat bubble. If you click that chat bubble, a Zoom webinar chat window will open up. The one thing you wanna make sure of is that where it says to, uh, you wanna make sure it says to all panelists and attendees. That way, any kind of questions you ask will go to all of our presenters and all of the other attendees as well. So if anyone has any questions, feel free to let us know. As I say, Everything is on the table. So any questions are uh, appreciated and let us know what kind of questions you have as we go through. Uh, but I know Gunther has a really good presentation to talk about these two games. So I will shut up my mouth and I will let Gunther take over. Gunther, it's all you, sir. Hello, everybody. I'm Gunther Eicher. And then I also have Uva Eicher. Um, Uva, were you going to run the tutor part of the uh, discussion? I don't know if Uva can hear me. Uva, you're unmuted. Yeah, you are muted at the moment. There you go. I'm sorry. I'm used to my wife just telling me to shut up. So sorry about that. Um, the uh, I'm setting up a 3D board here, Gwenta. So you want to start out with Agents of Mayhem, then I'll do Tudor afterwards? Okay. So yeah. So Agents of Mayhem is our first game of our new division, which is Apollo Games, which if you're not familiar with Academy Games, we are known for doing historical-based board games. So we're well known for games like our 1775, 878 Vikings, which are very accessible, uh, light air control games. And then also for like cooperative games like Freedom, the Underground Railroad. And so this is our first venture into a non uh, historical game. So we have put underneath our uh, division brand Apollo games, which will be handling all of our non historical sci-fi and fantasy games in the future. Okay. Historical sci-fi and fantasy games will still be under Academy Games. Um, but yeah, Agents of Mayhem. So the main big thing you see when you open up Agents of Mayhem or see it being played is that it's played on this awesome three-dimensional board. So first of all, it is a tactical board game, a head-to-head -head skirmish game. So it's played against up to two players, versus up to two other players. So it's a lot like our award-winning Conflict of Heroes system, which is our World War II squad level tactical game that's played on a flat hexagonal board. Now this uses a lot of the mechanics that we've refined over the years for Conflict of Heroes, but it applies it to a superhero setting in the future, and we are allowed to, able to do a ton of cool things with it on this 3D map. Um, so that is the first big selling point. Displaying this in your stores will instantly draw the eye to it and create a great set piece to talk about the game to a customer. And it's worked very well for us in the shows. Uva's showing off some of the uh, blurry miniatures we have. So, and it's a first Academy game that comes with 32 millimeter miniatures. They're just fantastically detailed. It comes with, the base game comes with, I think somewhere around uh, 14 unique miniature sculpts and around 20 miniature, individual miniatures. And um, yeah, 
So the uh, some of the other big parts of the game, the big selling points are one, it's a very fast playing game. It's there's not a lot of waiting around. This is one thing we took from our Conflict of Heroes games. So it has a a really quick clock rate where you're taking action every 15 to 30 seconds. And we do this by allowing each player only to activate one board at a time. Um, I'm going to quickly throw up a kind of video in the background so you can kind of see what I'm talking about while um, I am talking. And let me sh make sure I get the right video. Um, for those of you who don't know, the Agents of Mayhem universe is based on the Saints Row video game series. Um, if any of you have ever played Saints Row, you know it's like Grand Theft Auto on steroids and a little more mature and a little more crazy out there. So we've taken this, this really craziness and put it into the board game. What makes a board game so unique is that it's a fast two to four to six player game, one head to head, two to two, or three to three. Um, you're playing it back and forth in a quick tournament type of situation, but then there's a whole built-in scenario. And Gunther's now showing you a video of, yeah. of the game. So yeah, it's this quick back and forth play that will keep players engaged. And it plays just as quick from two to four players. Because when you're playing with four players, up to two players play on a team. And they each take actions at the same time and work together on a turn. And that's another great aspect of this game compared to other tactical games is that you actually can play it in team mode where you don't, for, this is especially good for players who like kind of cooperative games that are not big into conflict games. They still have a lot of fun with a game like this because they get to work with another player. The other key element that makes it good for non-conflict players is that you're controlling actually three players and you can freely switch between what characters you're playing. So if one of your character just gets in a really bad situation and a lot of other character-driven campaigns, games, your game is kind of ruined if you have a bad beginning of the game because your characters either have HP, actions, equipment, whatever. Good Here, job. you switch to the new character. Can you pause the video and just show what the character boards are doing? Well, I have another video for that. So I was gonna to switch to that after I, I, this video finishes. But yeah, so I'll go ahead and do that. So here, that's, this is what Uvo was mentioning, is that you're quickly switching between boards, taking actions with different boards, paying for the, with these action cubes at the top to take actions. Um, okay, where was I, Uva? Um, each the, character uh, has their own unique character board, and each character has special abilities that others don't have. Some people, as you can see, have more speed and dexterity, whereas others have better focus. And each type of action you're taking takes a different uh, combination of these abilities that you have to pay. Once you've used them up, you don't have any more. You cannot react. You can't attack. You can't uh, try to uh, defend yourself, get out of the way. So you're playing this balance game of doing incredible actions with other units together, combine whatever you want. But if you don't sit back and rest a little, you're not recharging and not keeping enough resources for that character to be able to uh, take defensive actions is something unexpected would happen. Yeah, and, and this is a thing that, again, another thing we learned from Conflict of Heroes, we took things we love about your games, which was really tight resource management, and we added that to the Agents of Mayhem. So instead of just giving characters action points, we actually split up action points among these four different color cube actions, and that makes it some really interesting, tough choices for the players. What actions do I want to choose depending on what resources have available and what resources I know I'm going to be getting in. And so it, it, it makes it again more accessible to, uh, to non-war game players. Gunta, if you could also replay that one and just go to the point and put it on pause so you can uh, just go through some of the details of what they're seeing. Well, I don't, I don't want to go into too many details about how the game plays, Uva. I want to stick to kind of the sales points about the game. 
Well, what I wanted to show them though, if you go back, that as you're playing your scenarios through campaign, that you can- I, I haven't even gotten to the campaign yet. That you can upgrade, yeah. Yeah, so, the, yeah, so I'll start talking about that. So the, the other big draw of this game is that there's a few ways to play the game. You can play the game in a solo variant where you only go, you are in, not solo variant, in a uh, standalone missions where you're playing individual missions and then you're done and you can always move on to the next mission. And this is great when you only have a few, oh, brought the wrong video. When you only have a few turn or a few, like an hour to play a single game. The, um, the other way you can play is that you can actually build your own missions with this game. Where we have this really unique system that we developed again for Conflict of Heroes called our Firefight Generator. And we took this and we actually include this whole expansion in the base box. And with this really cool card mechanic, you're able to create pretty much any kind of mission that we already created in Age of the Mayhem, plus a thousand different missions. And it's, it's a lot of fun because you're actually playing a game before you even start the game. And so we have a lot of people ask, oh, who won? And we say, now you play. And that's, that's one of the fun things that adds so, there's so much replay value in this game because of the stand low missions and then this infinite number of uh, player design missions that is, they're designed in a structure way. They're not just a, oh, you get so many points to build a force and then you can put random train down. You're actually having to make hard decisions through these card plays that each card has two options on them and you only can choose one. And you go back and forth playing these cards and you're kind of watching as your player plays cards, you're trying to make choices off of your avail remaining available cards that will counter your opponent's card plays and give you the upper hand in the mission. Then we take this whole mission generation system one step further with our Radiant Storyline campaign. Now, this campaign that we include with the game is kind of like a legacy campaign. You, all your choices will have permanent effects on the rest of your campaign and game. However, unlike other legacy games, the game is completely replayable. You can completely reset the game. You're not permanently destroying any pieces or altering pieces. We did the whole legacy game through non-destructible means. And that was a big thing because this campaign, every time you play, with, play through it, the stories will be different and the outcomes will be different based off your choices. So we want players to be able to experience that. And that's the big reason why we made it this replayable legacy game. Now, the way we have your players' choices affecting the game are through two things. One, players will often have to make a choice based off cards that are drawn from this campaign deck on what decisions they want the characters to make and what routes they want to go on. And every time you make a decision, it'll tell you so many cards to draw from a campaign deck. I'm going to start, stop sharing real, real quick. Okay, there we go. Now you can see my face again. So these campaign cards you have, they'll have multiple choices and every choice will have you draw different cards from the deck of campaign cards. And players are not able to see what these cards are and they're actually all numbered on the back of the card. So you don't know what its effect is will be until you draw it. Then there's also objective cards and these are just like the cards that build the missions but players will gain these objectives that they'll draw from the deck and they'll have to decide at what location this objective will be at. And you're actually building your future missions while you're playing your current mission based off your choices. And it, depending on whether you succeed at a mission, a certain objective in a mission or not, it'll have you either draw these cards or these cards if you fail that objective. And that is how we have this storyline branch. And based off what choice you make, am I going to go after this mission? How am I going to go after it? Am I going to hack into this death robot and take control of it ourselves? Or am I going to destroy it? Or am I going to let that death robot rampage across the city and go after a different objective? Each of those choices will radiate into different storylines. And what's really cool is that it will also affect other storylines. So that is 
probably the biggest draw, long-term draw for players. And it's the hardest thing for us to pitch because we have not seen a system like this. And so we really are looking forward to getting this in the hands of reviewers to let them start previewing the games. And once those start getting previewed, the whole campaign system is going to get a lot easier to sell. And it's going to be a big sell for this game. Um, it's been very hard to get review reviews of this game just because of the 3 na nature of the board. The prototypes for this game are pretty time intensive to make. And of course, as you know, as you're developing a game, you're always altering the prototypes. So we're not, we're able to get a quality review video done. So we decided instead of waiting, uh, doing a review video right now, we're gonna wait another month until we can have a final copy that we can send to a reviewer. But those review videos will definitely be a great resource where people can actually see how the campaign works without spoiling, spoiling anything for the campaign to sell the game. Now to talk about the really cool 3D nature of these 3D buildings again, I want to mention there, there are some concerns that people often have with the game. Um, um, many of you have played games with 3D levels to the board or other 3D aspects of the game. And games like Queen's Gambit, the board can be sometimes a little shaky and they can sometimes even fall apart unexpectedly if you knock into them and jar them. But our boards are extremely stable. They are not going to fall apart during, during play. The levels are not going to jiggle compared to the other levels. And that is because the building uh, uh, columns actually screw into each other with a 180 degree turn. This creates very quick setup and breakdown. But and, uh, remember Uva, yes, not two threads together. It took me months to get him to do it right. <laughs> but. Yeah, so it works this with really cool novel thing. And from what I know, we're the first company to actually mold these threaded pieces into the columns like this. And it just makes this really cool play surface. Now, the game comes with eight different buildings and a total of, I think, 15 or 16 base tiles to build your map up with. So there's a huge variety of the kind of... Uh, um, build you uh, kind of map you can make. You can make maps kind of like who, how Uva had it set up where all the buildings are set up separately or you can actually combine the buildings so that they make multi-room complexes. Um, the, other, and the other cool thing about this map is that the buildings are actually fully destructible. Some attacks will cause explosions on the map. And you'll place these explosion markers. And when enough explosion damage is dealt to a building, you'll actually remove the top level, remove all the posts. So do that with the tallest one, Uva. Oh, okay. The tallest building there. Destructive one here. So you can remove the top level and remove the four posts. And then I don't know if this prototype has it, but the back side of the top tile is always a destroyed part of the building and you'll flip it over and place on top of the level below. So these buildings can actually be destroyed level by level. If enough damage is built, dealt again to this building, the next level will be destroyed. And so it, there's, there's a ton of tactical options with this game. If you have a bunch of enemies holed up in a building, you have some options. You can go through the building, move in through the doors, jump through the windows, move up the stairs, take control of it. You can ignore it just by moving around it. If moving around is too hard, you can actually jump and even climb these buildings and move over them, or you can say, screw it, we're just gonna blow the whole thing up and just walk over the rubble. And maybe provide a little extra co cover for yourself with that rubble. So this is a very, very highly tactical game. Some of the comments we've got from, from play testers, it, one of my favorites is that this is one the oh, this is the most tactical game I've ever played. And this is after the person was taught the game in about five minutes and they're playing for the first time. So it is a, it's a fairly simple game, but it does so much, so many new cool things and there's so many options to do the strategy you can take that it really blows a lot of players' minds away. And it's a great step up from other tactical games that maybe don't have as many options. Games like Imperial Assault, I love Imperial Assault, but I feel like sometimes that the missions are a little bit too linear. 
I don't have a lot of choice in terms of the tactics I take. In this game, there's just a plethora of choices you can take. There's different routes you can take on the map. You can destroy things. You can either hack into them to take control of them. There's really no limit. Then there's also the characters that you can customize. So every character, can you pull up a character board, Uva? And I'm gonna throw up this video again about the character boards. You have all the character boards, Gunta. Oh, I have the character boards. Yes. Actually, I do not have any of the character boards, I don't believe. Well, I'll, uh, I'll show up via this video here. So characters, one, Every character has a different set of unique basic actions shown here. And they have awesome. a main character that has a special ability that let you do some really cool different things. So Hollywood is more of a ranged character. Fortune is the only character that can move and use her main attack in the same turn. Then you also have Hardtack, who is your melee close range character. And each of them have a very different play style just by changing how their basic actions work. Then on top of that, you will also have these gadget cards. And these gadget cards actually slide directly into your board and the top part of the board disappears. So the, these boards are actually double layer, which makes it great for cube placement. I'm gonna replay that portion again. Makes it great for cube placement so your cubes don't get jostled around when you move the board and allows for these cards to disappear and move into the board. Every character has nine different gadgets of the three different types. And so you only can have three at a time. And so every game you have to decide what three gadgets for this character are going to give me the different tactics I need to achieve victory. Every character also has a number of upgrade tokens. I'll replay that part again. And these are stored at the top here. And at the end of every mission, you'll receive so many dark metal crystals. And that's the upgrade point of the game. And you can pay these upgrade crystals to buy these upgrade tokens. And the upgrade tokens, there are, every character has 15 different upgrades. They can hold up to eight. It's gonna take you a lot of playthroughs, at least eight, probably more on average, just to fully upgrade a single character to give them all sorts of these crazy, really cool abilities. Um, and this is where we take, start off a very simple game and we keep adding more and more depth. The rabbit hole for this game just goes down, 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 where players can keep customizing it and adding these really cool nuances as they play mission after mission. That goes from customizing your characters where they start out very simple and you can keep adding new abilities, much like a legacy game, or with the different modes of play, with the standalone games that start very simpler, simply, to the build your own mission games that you need to know, have a fair good idea of how the game works to do in a smart way, to this really cool, involved, uh, a campaign system. So there's just this depth that will keep players coming. And that's why for this game, we have a full range of expansions planned for this game. At this point, I think we have somewhere around eight expansions already, uh, already being printed with the game that we're not going to release all at the same time. We're going to stagger them every few months. That way, the hype for the game keeps going, and also you will always have those follow-up sales uh, with the customers that purchased the base game. Gunta, if I can show them, if I can show them the base game here, it's a huge. Yeah, that, box. It's a box about the size of um, Gloomhaven. It is. I'm going to push everything off the side. It's actually a little bit better. It's, it's between Gloomhaven and, and like a box like uh, Seafall. Okay. And it's all, we had game trays, design all the trays, all the trays interlink, everything has a spot. Each individual Legion or Mayhem character has their own box where they keep their gadgets that they have um, collected and developed their mm -hmm. own uh, unit gadget upgrades. Those are the upgrades, yep. And then their miniature all come together, snap tight shut in the box. There are many of these in here. Then the main box for the for the dice 
and counters. Those are all the re things you'll use during play. So you'll yes. set that trait beside the board as a common supply for all, all players. And so it's very easy. Everything's nicely organized. Then underneath that are the player boards. The, Which are our prototype player boards. <laughs> the Legion um, box. All the, the all the, I didn't have here. the Legion units. Are your card boxes in there? Where your this is where all the columns go. And here are all the different boards. They all fit everything nicely, inter interlayered. So everything fits. It's easy to find, very easy to organize, makes the very game very accessible. Then the expansions are all about a third of the main box size and thinner. And they will then come in with um, the from the Saints Row and also Agents of Mayhem uh, fire teams, your firing squads, all these really cool characters that people know from the video games, they can then purchase the expansions for these. If you want yeah, to go each, to that. each expansion either will come with three new characters or a new Legion boss and some of his minions. So, it so each expansion comes with at least three miniatures. And um, of, of course, on more player boards, more cards, and that adds a lot of replayability to a game again because you're not just playing the same missions again where you're playing with different gadgets and new upgrades. You're playing with whole new characters with very different play styles. So if you get Shirazad, who's a sword, sword wielding ninja who can teleport, that really changes how you play the game compared to somebody like Fortune, who is a mid range running gun character. Um, the other thing I want to mention is that this is a luxury game. We spared no expense in making this a top-notch, best material you can have board game. That goes from the game trays that make the, uh, the setup and, and storage experience great to these awesome three boards with these modal posts, the beautiful miniatures, the double layer boards. It's all to give a sense of high quality, for a game that we've put a lot of time developing to make this as award-winning of a system as our Conflict of Heroes and our Birth of America series. Um, One last thing that going to, yeah. for the stores, we're gonna have, we have a special going on, discounted for, for our brick and mortar mm -hmm. stores that we um, allow into our system through GTS. Then also stores are gonna have special deal where in your stores, you can then also get, if you buy so many games, the super giant version of this, where each of these layers are almost um, eight well, inches. Exactly tall. twice as tall. And it's everything's twice as tall. So the layout's going to be two and a half feet high, huge area boards where you. And the tiles are twice as big. So in the store, you'll be able to demo it, showing up, people come and go, holy cow, look at that, this is cool get into it playing right away. Um, you'll need uh, to set it up in any type of to play. You'll need a four by four table at least. But with a giant game. With a the giant base game. Yes. can set up on a three by three table. Uh, so you'll be able to play it very quickly. There you're gonna do your tournament. We have a bunch of tournament games you can play where they're playing for 20 minutes to half an hour, have a blast, boom, you're done. You can, they can even bring in their own characters that they want from home have well, their gadgets already set up, do their arena. Actually, Uva, what's cool about the tournament play is because of the way characters progress, after every round of the tournament, you get to upgrade your characters. And so you're building up your team as you progress through the tournament. And that gives a sense where you're not just playing with the same deck or the same characters game to game to game. You're actually upgrading and making choices as you progress through the tournament. Sorry, going up. Go ahead. Yeah. So, um, I, if anybody has any questions, so we can uh, answer them about Aids of Mayhem before Uva moves on to tutors, or we can also, of, of course, answer them after he uh, introduces tutors to your guys. Yeah. Just as a reminder, um, if anyone does have any questions, there's been a couple of comments here and there. Uh, one came up from Steve said that the insert is totally awesome, by the way. So that was good feedback. Um, if anyone does have any questions, if you hover over your uh, Zoom window, there is a little bar at the bottom. There is a chat bubble icon. You can click on that and you can type in your questions in chat. 
Uh, just as a note, um, the default will say just to attendees. If you do a drop down and you choose all panelists and attendees, that will send a message to everyone. So uh, everyone that is an attendee or anyone like Uva or Gunther or myself or anyone else in the GTS team will see all that. So feel free to type in any kind of questions you have in the chat box. Um, and it doesn't, it doesn't look like there's anything coming in right now, but again, there is sometimes a little bit of a delay back and forth, so that's not a problem. If anyone does have questions that pop up, I can just kind of, you know, kind of slide in when the opportunity is right uh, and let everybody know what kind of questions there are. But if you guys want to shift on to Tudor, then by all well, means, shift on. To I that. just rem I remembered one thing I wanted to mention about this game. So yeah. Beat the Mayhem is a game with mature content. So that's from the video game, and we translated that to the board game. So there is some uh, cuss words on the cards, and there are some sexual references and innuendos to play into the humor of the game. But we know that the game market is also a very family-oriented market. And so we actually included also as a, a, a small, really cheap expansion, a family-friendly conversion deck. So this is a deck of cards that has replacement cards for all the non PG cards in the game and makes those cards PG. So it makes the game that you could play the game with your 10 year old without worrying about them learning something they have not already learned from the internet. Um, <laughs> so yeah, th we really thought about how to make this game the accessible to the most customers. We wanted to stay true. We are a historical board game company. We treated the Ages of Mayhem universe as history and we researched it and tried to represent it as accurately and unbiased as possible, since you can play as both the bad guys or the good guys in this game. And then we, so we, of course, we had to have the mature content, but we also then included the means to play it in a, uh, a family-friendly way. So yeah, and, and for people that feel like this game is, there's so much depth to this, one of the other important sales point is that you actually learn the game You'll read two pages at a time and then play a short five to 10 minute tutorial scenario. And by the time you're in, uh, finished reading the first section of rules, you'll have your first full mission set up and you've already played through six tutorial missions to teach you the rules in a very hands-on kinetic way. Uh, and, and then you can start on your first mission and you can do that with the whole group. So everybody feels very comfortable with the rules when, rules when you start the game. So this is great for people people have never played a tactical board game before, and this might be their first one. So yeah, awesome. that's all I have. Good to know, good to know. Looks like Uva has uh, everything set up there for uh, Tutor as well. Yeah. So um, no questions have come in. Um, Greg did say all good so far. So uh, usually when there's no questions, that means you're answering all the questions during your discussion, so that's good. Um, but just as a reminder, if anyone does have questions, uh, feel free, drop them in the chat window and we will get to them as they come up. Uh, but otherwise, we'll kick it over, I think, to Uva to talk about tutors. Yes. Um, again, we are conflict of our academy games. We're known for our historical games like our Freedom Underground Railroad, which is I highly advise stores. If you've never had Freedom Underground Railroad in your store, especially with uh, Black History Month coming up in February, um, Wall Street Journal last year did a whole full half page ad just on Freedom Underground Railroad. It's an editorial about it, not an ad. Uh, I'm sorry, yeah, to, uh, 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 an article on it. So I highly recommend also our Freedom Underground Railroad. We just came out with a new edition that has a new UPC code number because now we've added all wooden slave catcher ponds, everything. Uh, Freedom Underground Railroad is being used in community centers, in schools throughout the United States. University. Canada, universities. Universities. Um, Montessorian schools. You can play it. This is really for 12 and up. So highly recommended. Um, the newest ones have real big from the Wall Street Journal, their quote on the front, because at first people did not understand that Freedom Underground Railroad is a cooperative game trying to end slavery. And a lot of people really forgot what history happened, really what things went into effect before the Civil War yeah. and the entire abolitionist movement going on. So highly recommend this. But as I was saying, most people are um, used to Academy Games doing our historical games like our Vikings, 878 Vikings, which is, um, again, a game with tons of miniatures and everything. This is one of our best continually selling game, came out last year. Um, a lot of people say it looks like Risk. 
but it plays very quickly. And then, of course, are military training games that are used in uh, the War College and also by Marine Corps officer training, things like that, are Conflict of Heroes. And I just wanted to put into place that our Agents of Mayhem is based on a Fallujah urban combat training game, Marine Corps training game. So um, a lot of yep. the Marine people are having a blast when they're seeing, you know, these, these women stormtroopers coming in or this big golem destroying buildings and going, hey, this is from Fallujah, this is just a, an RPG team here or a, um, a rocket propelled grenade, not that people think role playing game. <laughs> yeah. We've got to keep our acronyms correct. So what we're though doing also is um, with our Apollo games and our other games now, we're broadening the strategic games from just our historical military into role playing and fantasy. And we'll get into that. Our first in the series is going to, is the um, game going to develop the uh, Agents of Mayhem. And then this here is another one in our pure Euro historical series on Henry VIII, and it's called Tudor, and it's going to be available end of February. And the Tudor game is a two to four player game of, you're playing, it's a, um, a uh, worker placement tile collecting game. So pure Euro. And you and your family are in the chambers going to be bringing in your courtiers to be placed in different chambers. And each chamber has big symbols on them that, uh, that tell you what you can do in the gameplay. And you're, you're trying to get your courtiers up the court of Henry VIII to get the big titles, offices, uh, the Lord Chamberlain title, or the, um, the head of records, etc. And as you're getting these titles, you will then be gaining rings of influence. And these rings of influence will allow you to navigate the courtroom and the different factions that are in each uh, place in the courtroom will allow you to get through them quicker. And of course, we have brand new games that came in and all of our games that are being played, everybody took home because everybody loves playing this game so much. So if I'm going, Every courtroom spot has a different faction. Could be church faction, could be the intellectual faction, the military factions. And to take actions, it helps if you have these rings aligned with these factions. So as you gain rings, depending how you wear them on your fingers, they exert and tell other people what your intents are, what your influences are. Because depending on which fingers you decide to put your rings, that combination gives you benefits in the games that make the different actions you can take give them enhancements. So by wearing your rings in different combinations, and it shows the pictures and the combinations here, it gives you different abilities. But as you're placing your rings the way you want them, you're also radiating to your other players what your intentions are. So are your intentions to start going after a new Chamberlain position, or are you just putting these on there to make other people think that's what you want to do, and then you do something totally different to blindside them? So this game is a wonderful worker placement tile collecting game. You can even wear the rings. Not only every player has their own lordly hand to put the rings on, but if you want, you can put the rings and instead of using this, wear them on your own hands. So this is a game that players who are new to the game instantly see and they go, wow, that looks different. Very fun to play. It's not a very head-to-head -head because you can decide at the beginning of the game, you have different setup options. And we give six suggestions of different type of in-game play variations, and then the two scoring cards, which make each game different. And we have six different combination suggestions, which can be a very, oh, we all get along, we're doing our own thing, nobody's really hitting very uh, very head-to-head. Uh, -head. 
for the people who don't like confrontational or a little more cooperative and that they're not really competing that much, two combinations where it's one of the most backstabbing games you can imagine where everybody is just scheming like it really was. So this is in Tudor. And we also have, um, we're working with uh, GTS also where we have a special combination of the base game, which comes with really nice wooden meeples, the Ravensburger wooden meeples. So they're standard meeples, which are your courtier. Or we then also came up with, we have a very limited amount of our miniature expansion. And the miniature expansions are, instead of the wooden little meeples, they are beautiful 28 to 32 millimeter, very historically accurate um, medieval miniatures. And these medieval courtier miniatures are from the ladies of the court to the diplomats, all different type of courtiers. And it's a very limited amount, and we are going to make these available only for, a, um, for the people on a pre-order basis. People don't pre-order them. They're going to be out of luck. So the combination of the tutor, you can contact also GTS between tutor and the miniatures. These are only available for brick and mortar stores. They're not going to be available through any type of distribution. We're keeping them off of um, any type of big box online retailers because we want to keep this, give the retail stores some type of advantage when this game comes out. Um, real quick, Uwe, I hate to interrupt. It looks as though either you or Gunter are sharing your screen for a video, um, making what you're showing with the hands and the rings very small. Is it possible to take the sharing off so that we can get the full screen of you when you're talking in the retailers? Yeah, there we go. That way they can see the- Oh, I'm so sorry about that. Okay. There. No, that's okay. So um, now they can we, see my, my screen a little better, better, bigger? Yeah, much better, much better. Oh. Um, we also did have a question. Uh, Derek Furman had a question on Agents of Mayhem to jump back a little bit. Um, he wants to know, have you thought about doing an economy version of the game and a separate deluxe upgrade kit containing the storage trays and other things, et cetera? Uh, he said, in his opinion, that would make it potentially accessible to more buyers. So I didn't know if you guys had a comment on that. At this time, we have not. Uh, we have the base game with everything in it. That's going to be the $95 MSRP. And each expansion is going to be roughly $30 to $35 with the campaign um, add-ons and new fire teams and everything. Um, it is something, though, that in the future we could look at because we're doing that also with our Conflict of Heroes series, which are $90 war games. Um, so that's a very good comp. At this time, no, just because it's... Um, it's a flagship product in, in the series, and we first have to come out with that first. But it is a very good point that I think we could easily implement, don't you think, Gunta? Uh, your, your, your microphone's off, Gunta. You're on mute. Age of Mayhem also, it has, um, it, it's really three games in one with those standalone missions and then the firefight generator, which is in Conflict Heroes, the whole expansion itself. And then the campaign, each of those, those two last second things could be their own expansions. However, we decided to put them in the base game because we wanted reviewers to review those really cool parts of the game. Reviewers tend not to put as much focus on expansions. They only focus on the base game. So to get this whole really unique, cool, never been before done campaign system, we put that in the base game. So it got reviewed and it got people know, knowing about it, interested in that part of the game. And uh, so that's one advantage that putting all this stuff in the base game gives is that people will get hyped about it because influencers and reviewers are actually covering it. So, um, did that answer the question, I hope? 
I'm, I'm not viewing it. Scott, I don't know yeah. if you uh, no one, uh, Derek didn't reply to that, but I'm yeah. presuming it does answer the question. Yes, okay. it, right Right now there's no plans to make a uh, an economy version with the deluxe upgrade, but you guys have taken it into account. We yeah, do have that. plans for follow-up uh, standalone games in this series. So that's where we would maybe do an economy version, maybe a, a another standalone game that can be added to the original game, but it only maybe includes some new characters and standalone missions. Um, and that would be where we would actually create a economy game to draw on those players who didn't get the original. That they now get this economy version, and then they could always then get the original to add on the campaign to it. All right. Well, I'm going to get back then to the tutor real quick. Uh, sure, sure. Tutor, we did find here a. Are you you're sharing your screen again, Gunta? I think. No, I've, uh, we've got it as your your screen of it with the board in the hand and so, everything. In these, you can wear them like this. We also made sure for colorblind people that everything's with symbols on the front and the back. So these are little stickers players will be able to put on. Then people have also said, because it is really cool, when you see people playing this game and they're wearing the rings on their hands, well, I have fat fingers. So these are really high in PVC that you can then open up the rings. You just open it up and you can put them on any finger, even for big fingered guys like myself. So we really have a lot of fun with, uh, with, with tutors because it is very interactive, quick playing. Every game is different. Um, the turns are in, uh, a normal game is only three to six players. And as you can see, each one of Henry VIII's wives are shown on the map board here. So it could be maybe, um, Jane Seymour's, it's that round, and then the next round, it moves up one to the next wife, and then tilts over, and then you do the final scoring. So, highly recommend. Um, it was the number one spotlight game, rated number one spotlight game at Essen last fall, and it is one of the highest demand, we're told by the Germans, or German partners, highest demand games for the Spiel des Jahres judges in Germany. So the game is making some waves in Europe and everything. Um, we haven't, we're now just coming out with it with the release end of February here in America. So if you could maybe give Tudor, um, look at that. And we're taking pre-orders now with the limited miniatures expansion with it. And um, just as a reminder, anyone who does uh, pre-order from GTS this week between this Monday the 4th and next Monday the 11th, <clears throat> you can also get 52% off MSRP for the pre-order, which is great. Yep. Anything else then? Those rings are really cool, Uva. I got to admit, so that was the one of the questions I was going to ask you was, you know, for a guy with meat hooks, you know, how does how does that work? And that's that's really awesome. But yeah. then... The fact, that you've got the, um, the fact that you've got the colorblind on both sides of the, the sticker is that, that just shows really good thought and really good, you know, planning ahead of time for things. I have actually, uh, in the short time that I've been in the industry, only about six years, I have met more people who have been colorblind in gaming than any other walk of life or anything else I've done in my life. So it's, uh, it's always become a prevalent part of things. So it's really interesting to see that you guys have taken the time to do the front and do the back as well. You know, it's funny because I am, I found out I'm not colorblind, I'm pastel blind. Really? That's so, interesting. <laughs> you'll see most of our games are very bright colors, but you put a, a turquoise with a, a coral seashell desert together, which is some type of pink, they told me. Uh -huh. I can't tell the difference, you know, <laughs> That's when they, okay. when they give me the tests. So we like bright colors <laughs> so, so uh, a question just came up from uh greg about the mini expansion with the miniatures um so uh, i believe this may be the first time we've actually been hearing about this too Uva, so this may just be a timing thing but um he wanted to know if uh they pre-order the game through gts will they be able to get the mini expansion as well for tutor is that something that's going to be available that we can set up on our system for retailers to pre-order with us Yes, yes. Um, and that's going to be only through the pre-orders are they going to be available because these are only limited. We only have okay. we only need so many of these. Sure. And when they're out, they're out. 
Okay, perfect. So we'll get that set up, Greg, and we'll make sure that can be part of the part of the program as well. I can uh, I can circle up with uh, Uva and Gunther and Tim after this just to make sure we have all the information for it. Um, one one question uh, is is there a way for me to share a PDF file? Uh, yeah, you should just be able to choose share at the bottom of the screen. Uh, you can either choose your desktop or you can choose the PDF if you have it open, and you should be able to to share that with everyone. I'm presuming like share a link to people to download it. Like in Skype. Um, oh yeah, if you have a link, you can put it in the chat window. Um, and then if you want to, I'll I'll copy it from the chat window and make sure that we include it with the video description as well. Yeah, I don't have them up on our website to download yet. They're just on my uh, computer. Um, so what what we'll do is we'll put the sales sheet up to, on our website on in each of the respective games resource pages. So if you want to get the sales sheet, or you can also uh, always uh, contact Tim uh, Korkluski. He has the sales sheets. And he can give you a sales sheet with all the order information for Tudor or Ages of Mayhem. Yeah, um, and uh, Gunther, if you want to send me links to it, like I said, I can make sure it's okay. in the video yeah, description. I'll, too. I'll send it to you as well. Great. And um, the, the last thing, I, I just want to add one more thing about Ages of Mayhem because it was a big sell point that I forgot to mention, is that we are also we are going to have available a solo expansion for Ages of Mayhem. So that allows players to play the game with themselves against an AI opponent from either the Legion or Agents of, uh, Agents of Mayhem perspective, or you can even also play the game cooperatively where you have two players playing against an AI opponent. Um, so that I just wanna make sure people knew that was available. And this was just, again, a thing that we made this game as um, appealing to as many customers as possible. Cause we found there are a ton of solo war gamers and board gamers out there. And you know, there are not many- it's a really good thing. I was actually talking to a publisher last week who's recently uh, started to plan to release some solo player games. And the discussion that we had was that because there are so many games that are coming out that it's getting harder and harder for gamers to actually get together with game groups because time is so limited. And usually when you sit down to play a game, if it's like a two hour or three hour game, that's even more challenging to get people together. So there's more and more gamers who are looking for games that provide that two to four player or two to six player experience, but still have the option to do something solo. So if they can't get everybody together, they can still have the solo option to play their games and kind of move through their collection. So that's good to hear that that's going to be part of it. Yep. Gunter, did you also mention that we're going to have a family friendly? Yes, uh, I did. Okay. Yes. Yep. Yep. Right. Um, and then finally, guys, I know Tim just posted it in the, uh, the chat window here, but um, if people want to get a hold of you and ask any kind of follow-up questions or just reach out and find Academy Games in general, what's the best resources or best places for them to reach out to you guys at? So you can always contact uh, Tim at gameconnect.tim at gmail.com or we also have sales at academygames.com. I'll type it here right now. I just put it in the chat window. And so those are the two best ways to get in contact with us. And... Um, from there, you can get all the information you need about the, uh, the games and the ordering process and what content we have available now and what content we'll have available in the future. Excellent. I screwed up. It's calm. See yeah, no, I, I see that. Yeah, that's okay. We'll make sure to have these in the video too as well so people can yep. uh, have them at the end of the bumper as well. So. Uh, there's no additional questions that have come in right now, but um, that is okay. I think you guys have covered more than enough. Um, we're actually hitting up against our bumper time here right now, um, but definitely want to say thank you very much. You guys have had a lot of information to share here, both about these two games, about Tudor and about Agents of Mayhem, but about some of the other ones that you mentioned uh, with Freedom and with 878 Vikings. Uh, Freedom has been one of the more uh, really surprise games to me in terms of not just how good of a game it is, but how classy and how tastefully you guys have touched on that subject uh, being such a challenging mm -hmm. subject kind of approach, but do it in a way that is both educational and entertaining as well, which is really cool. So really do appreciate you guys taking the time to come talk to everybody from a retailer perspective. Thank you so much for joining. I know it's always a challenge no matter what time or what day it is. And, and everyone is very busy being retailers, but really do appreciate everyone taking the time. As a reminder, if you pre-order Tudor or if you pre-order Agents of Mayhem from GTS this week between February 4th and February 11th, 2019, uh, feel free to let your GTS uh, sales rep know, but we will make sure that the plan is in place to get you guys 52% off for your pre-orders. Um, again, Tudor's is coming out very soon. Agents of Mayhem is right behind it. Um, and definitely want to appreciate uh, everyone know we appreciate your time. So 
Uh, with that, gentlemen, we'll let you guys go. We'll let all the retailers go and have a great week. Happy selling to everyone. Thanks so much for watching.